In the fertile lands of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers over 5,000 years ago, royal, urban, and state institutions arose for the first time in history. Natural and constructed waterways connected growing population centers, home to intrepid merchants, farmers, fishers, and craftspeople. The ancient city of Lagash grew quickly and became more powerful than many of its peers. Remains from this site and others like it are reformulating our notion of cities, both past and present. Iraqi and international archaeologists have returned to Lagash to uncover its secrets. When I was here in 1990 for the first time at the city of Lagash, I was working with Donald Hansen and he and I talked about a new series of campaigns for excavations at Lagash. And sadly, political forces made that impossible. Um, in 2007, Donald died, and he had not completed the analysis of his six campaigns. And so I inherited that archive, and for 10 years, I worked with a fabulous team of graduate students who analyzed all of that material that he excavated and beautifully recorded, and we're now in the process of finishing those publications. And so I approached the uh, State Board of Antiquities and Heritage in 2018 and requested a permit uh, to return for excavations at the site of Lagash. At the same time, I met uh, somebody who is absolutely essential to this project, and that is Dr. Zaid al-Rawi. This is one of uh, the biggest uh, Mesopotamian sites, if not the biggest uh, in southern Iraq. And we are uh, excavating Area H this season, which has um, uh, revealed kilns and other structures um, related to people's activities. And that's important for our research questions. We wanted to know what people were doing. But investigating Lagash requires much more than excavation. Over 400 hectares, the site could contain more than 1,000 football fields. Environmental studies, satellite imagery, remote sensing, drone survey, and walking survey are all techniques being employed here. In a broad sense, these are combined under the term landscape archaeology. Simple use of Google Earth Pro, and we turn on the historical image just to have an idea how was the area, uh, how did it look like, what was the effect of uh, natural phenomena on these sites. And as we go back, sometimes, you know, the area is dry, Sometimes it has some water. We noticed uh, uh, two other small mounds to the uh, east of the actual city of uh, Lagash. And when we went to visit them, they turned out both of them are archaeological sites. Uh, I went to older maps from the old uh, archaeological atlas of Iraq to look if, there, if these sites were surveyed and registered and it turned out they haven't apparently because they were underwater this is the city of Lagash and the two sites are one in here one in there there is nothing the only indication for this area is the existence of marshes now it's our opportunity when there is less water and the sites are exposed to find out about them and have them registered and protect them Discovering other sites surrounding Lagash is only part of the story. The entire ancient environment must be investigated. This is accomplished partly through soil cores. With the help of RSK Iraq, a company that supports scientific drilling, the Lagash project has extracted soil core samples down to 25 meters depth, reaching below the Pleistocene boundary. So, what do these soil samples tell us? They help us to understand the environment, um, understand what types of vegetation was in the area, what types of river regimes uh, were in the environment. So when we're back this far, a lot of the rivers are actually moving north from the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, and as we get closer to our period in time, we start having the sort of north to south Tigris-Euphrates movement. And you can see that transition, the types of sediments that are in the cores that we're finding. Um, and the types of macro inclusions, so the types of rocks, whether they're getting kicked out from the Arabian Peninsula or they're getting brought down from the Zagros. 
Uh, so there's a lot of information you can get just from a little bit of dirt in a pipe. Additional soil cores were obtained in 2019 and 2021. The first seasons have returned to Lagash. So in 2019, um, we had our first season. Donald had focused his work on uh, monumental architecture, and so he revealed two temples um, of the early Dynastic III period, another probable temple complex of the early Dynastic I period um, that we will go back to, um, and an administrative area with the royal inscriptions um, in Area C. So on that foundation, we built um, a research plan that would try to uh, examine the integration of these monumental structures and the institutions that they represent and the daily life um, of the inhabitants of Lagash. Understanding the different areas of the city and its integration with its surroundings is supported by aerial photography from drones. The drone itself is a DJI Phantom 4 RTK. It's uh, it's pretty much the same like a consumer level Phantom 4, but it's got the addition of extra GNSS receivers that talks to that base station right there. Uh, and what that gives us is really precise and accurate, precisional accuracy around the, uh, the site. So I don't have to lay out ground control points, but I can still do flights and know exactly where things are. Walls, streets, buildings in general, any kinds of structure are visible from the air subsurface. So, you, you know, you walk across the site, you might see slight variations in color. But once you get up 100 meters, those variations in color form nice rectangles and straight lines and things. Ground survey helps to refine the image from the air. Guided by global positioning satellites, archaeologists gather samples of surface objects at regular intervals. Analyzing these helps to locate areas of specific time periods and particular activity types. For example, concentration of metal slag might indicate an area used for smelting. We are at Lagash. We are doing uh, archaeological survey uh, from uh, south uh, to north of the site. And we have uh, 47 uh, points so far. Okay. Between one point um, and another is 50 meters. As I approach the point I want to survey, I put the pole in the uh, bureau and I have a string of one meter uh, diameter and I start collecting surface uh, materials uh, around the center point. One of the benefits of doing this survey is determining the uh, limit of the site. In addition uh, to that, we, you know, when we collect service collections, it tells us about the nature of different spots, whether it's a, it's a wall, a street, um, uh, drainage, uh, other things. Basically, the surface materials indicate what it is that we are collecting, and we register that on the iPad. The many elements of landscape archaeology being utilized at Lagash have refined the team's research questions. And we have begun to answer those research questions. I've worked together with um, Augusta McMahon and Sara Pizzamente, who are the co-field directors. Um, and we have uh, revealed that there are important uh, chronological questions that need to be asked before we can really understand the nature of uh, this great city. And of course, excavation is necessary to confirm what is found on survey and in remote sensing. The magnetometry that we did in 2019 showed that there's a whole area of houses and streets around here. So what we really wanted to look at was the street, because these are under-examined contexts, but they're really important in terms of the lived experience of people in ancient cities. Uh, you know, you spend a lot of time in the street, walking around, going to work. But anyway, what did they do in the streets? Did they keep them clean? Are they paved? Is there a lot of water or trash? Or you know, what do the streets look like? So we do have a street sort of in the middle right here, um, and we have houses. We have a set of houses on this side. Sort of houses over there as well. We also have a number of drains and a later burial and so on from um, from areas which have have now eroded away. Uh, 
I've got a wonderful ED1 building, really dynastic one building. Uh, and immediately in the north, a uh, small street, maybe much more than an alley, and then another building. So we're, what we are now removing here is a huge mud brick collapse. We got, before we got a wonderful roof collapse that we already removed with all the stuff on the top of the roofs collapsed and crashed. Uh, and now we're removing the mud brick collapse and we do hope to find the floor with something on the top maybe. So we got like two rooms, one, two, actually three, the four is this one and five. Two, three, four, five, six rooms of this building and going on in the collapse. In this trench we have kilns above some structures. So the kilns appear to be early dynastic 3A and the building below it might be earlier in that period or it could be late in the early dynastic 1. There is no early dynastic two in this particular region. So we're trying to figure out how all of this was built. Right now we're defining the walls. They're not extremely clear. All of the soil around them contains fallen brick. So essentially the soil around is the same stuff of the walls, just out of place. So we're in a kiln, in one of the three kilns that we've seen so far. So what we presume is that there were several different occupations of this kiln. Um, and we're still trying to figure out how it works because you do need some air to get in so that you can do all the firing. We presume this is a, a pottery kiln, so related to some of this kind of shirts that we find. Pottery and other artifacts are processed at the excavation dig house, only a kilometer and a half away from the site. Every artifact is cleaned appropriately and studied. Counts and weights tell of the overall volume of material in each area. So here in this place we are sorting pottery and basically we are just dividing the Andeniotic wall and here instead we have all the dynastic part of the pottery of the vase. Basically we divided even for the fabric so it's corrugated or it has something inside so we have a lot of division actually. But uh, in, um, in this part, for example, we divided even the shape of the, of the pottery, of the vase. So we have the beakers, we have the vat, we have jars uh, and the bases, uh, wing bases, string cut bases, uh, a lot of things. And after, we have to describe uh, all, the, all the pottery, of course, belonging to the respective layers. Pottery is by far the most abundant material found on the site. The different styles help date the levels from which they come. Other objects are also found, including stone tools, clay figurines, and copper pins. Seals and ceilings are among the most informative as to the administration of the site in antiquity. I mean, we can date the seal. 2900 to 2700, so Jim did not so early dynastic, but it, it's hard to use the seal to date the context because seals get held on to for long periods of time. All of the artifacts uncovered stay in the country of Iraq. Most go to the Iraq National Museum in Baghdad, while some go to a museum closer to Lagash in the city of Nasiriya, so that they may be retrieved more easily for future study by the team. Representatives of the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage, archaeologists themselves, ensure that these artifacts are properly protected and transported. My name is Bakr uh, Adab Wali. I work for the Antiquities Inspectorate of BCAR. Uh, my job here with the uh, American Expedition at uh, uh, the city of Lagash is to uh, benefit and improve my uh, skills working um, with uh, different uh, ex uh, experts. Uh, also, um, uh, my job is to facilitate and uh, work with the team uh, while they are uh, excavating and extracting uh, and covering um, antiquities pieces, artifacts. Uh, make sure that they are uh, uh, excavated properly, being organized, clean, and then uh, packaged in a safe manner until they are handed um, uh, to the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage in Baghdad. It will take many years to analyze the data and answer specific research questions. But the Lagash team is already asking even bigger questions. 
Is this great city actually one of um, political and religious significance in the early dynastic period? Or in fact, do those functions uh, really go to Girsu, which is 25 kilometers to the north, and this, this huge city of Lagash is really a place of, of production, both of food and of crafts. And so our surveys are showing um, very dense uh, craft production, not only uh, ceramics, which have been revealed in the kilns, but also stone production, shell production, metal production. Those will be um, the, the locuses of investigation as uh, we return for future seasons. It would not have been possible without the uh, deep support of the University of Pennsylvania, and in particular, uh, the Penn Museum, which has provided both personnel and um, financial support for our work.